Welcome to Series 7 of The Dig Podcast, and I am your host, Caroline O'Neill. In this series, I am talking to business owners, entrepreneurs, and experts who are sharing their journey and preparing us for the future. What does the working world look like in the future? It changes every week, every day, every hour. So tune in each week as I ask my guests how they are future-proofing their business. This is a really different episode on the Dig Podcast this week. It's just me. So it's been a while since it's just been me in front of the camera. And um, I've had a lot of questions on social media over the past while and from other businesses that I mentor about what what's your journey? what What's your story, Caroline? What is your tips? What's your advice? And I do try to bring that to the fore and with the guests that I speak to. But I guess I've got so much to say just about everything that I've been through too. So there is a podcast recording of me and my story um, just up until COVID, that dreaded word. Um, but I am aware that a lot of people don't go back on the episodes and maybe don't know. So I, I'll not delve in too deep, but just want to give you a wee idea of kind of my background and then give you some of my um, advice really for business life and growth and managing and juggling it all because it's certainly not easy. My production team have forced me into really doing this today because I kind of was like, do you know what? I don't really need to do that podcast about me. They're like, no, 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 no. We had it in the schedule. You're doing it. So um, I think sometimes it's important to take yourself out of your comfort zone as well. So here I am, even though I love talking and all of that, sometimes it's hard when the spotlight's shone on you. But also there's learning to be to be seen here within my story, I think. So I was an occupational therapist before I ventured into self-employment and um, there's a, there's definitely learning in that because I would speak to a lot of people who are in that kind of um, role that they've left school, went to university, got a degree and have fell into a job that they feel they should stay in for the rest of their life. And I hear it all the time. I hear it from Mary, who works with me now in the production team, where she's a teacher and she was, she, you know, she wants to try new things now. And she's been on a a, journey, a transformational journey. And, a, and, you know, it's not easy when you're in a career, a safe career and a good job. And your parents are fearful of you leaving it. Like I always tell the story that mummy was devastated when I left occupational therapy. And sometimes that can hold you back and hold your dreams back because you're thinking, no, I, I, I need to be safe. I need to watch my money yeah I'm never sure of it when you're self-employed so that's definitely a journey that a lot of people go on but I suppose my advice would be if you are in that position and you're in a job that is not fulfilling you or it's not for you or it's not um you feel like it's not lighting your fire or not getting you to fulfill your dreams and you need to take steps to change that so it's not easy to just leave your job straight away take small steps Perhaps go meet people that are doing something that you love to do. Start to get a feel for what that might look like if you had it as a business. Start going to events, networking in, start like a side hustle that they talk about. Um, and that will help you see the industry for, for one that you want to delve into and also get a reality. Um, and I do talk to a lot of uh, uh, business owners on the podcast. One recently was Brenton from Be Perfect. And he talked about stepping stones. Like he never left his job fully till he, until he was sure that his side hustle was actually going to fulfill everything he needed it to fulfill. So it was a very safe, good advice. Um, I can't proclaim that that's the way it happened to me. I was 20, 24 when I left occupational therapy and I had trained in retail really as I was a student and I opened a shop in Dungannon, a clothes shop and um, Dig Children's Wear. And the reason it was called Dig is because, and a lot of people know this, so apologies if, if this is like an old story to you, but it means a lot to me and kind of where the dig brand has came from. Um, my daddy drives a digger and he gave me the money. I didn't have any money. And um, he said, and I couldn't get any money from the bank. And he said to me, look, if you believe you can do this, I will help you get started financially and we'll take it from there. So I was like, what am I going to call my shop? And and it was actually a friend of mine said, um, why don't you just, I said, I'd love to do something to like a nod to daddy. And she said, let's call it dig. So I did, I added another G and I called it Dig Children's Wear. And do you know what? It was Dig Men's Wear actually back then, but it evolved into Children's Wear. Um, so much has grew from Dig. So we now have Dig the brand really because there's Dig Mama, Dig for Success, the Dig Podcast, Dig Deep for Kids. And um, it's all kind of, it makes me feel good whenever I look at it now because I'm like that, the roots was daddy and family and loyalty and support and that the values that I have and everything that I do. 
So I was really building a brand and I didn't know back then, but I would say that a lot of people always look at that, what your brand is, what is your, a business is a business, but what is a brand? It's, it's, val- it's about your values and do you have those set? Do you know what those are? And is everything guided by those values? And without really knowing that's kind of how I've lived my business life with those. And it was actually Loney from being a production said to me before I came on, you know, you need to talk about your brand values because that's what you stick to with everything that you do. And it is. And I'll talk a wee bit more about that in a minute. I've got, all, as if I didn't know my own story, I've got all my points written down in front of me, but sometimes it's very hard. I've been through a lot over the last few years to remember the the journey. But basically I grew Dig Children's Wear for 12 years. and um, It evolved from men's wear to children's wear. Businesses evolve and change happens. And that's something that I do talk to entrepreneurs on the podcast about. Change is good. Um, I know. I remember whenever I changed from menswear, I felt like, oh God, that means menswear didn't work for me or menswear, you know, I failed at that. And I wish I could tell myself then what I know now that actually, no, the landscape changed, my customer changed. I, I started to see what my customer really wanted and I actually analysed that and I changed. So that was a good thing. So I would say to anybody listening, if you're in your business and there's something going stale, don't hang on too long because that's when problems start to happen. Make the change fast. And that's always stood by me that I've, I'm a fast um, mover. If I see something's not right and I need to change it, I will do it. Now, I might have feelings of failure deep down inside, but I'm still going to change. So um, my business evolved a lot. And then obviously the rece- I was in the middle of the recession when I opened and um, listened to a lot of people saying, don't open the shop. And, and, and that's a big thing too. Whenever you're in business, if you listen to people and don't follow your gut, yes, you want to take the right advice, but sometimes people's advice isn't the right advice. You need to figure out who are the right people with the right knowledge first and then make your decision. So Dig Children's where I grew. I had to learn a lot about the digital landscape then because everybody was shopping online and there was nobody coming in through my doors. And I talked about this in the other podcast. So I learned all about digital marketing myself because I had no money. So my dad gave me money to get started, but there was no more money came into the pot. I had to then turn it and make it myself. And rightly so otherwise it wasn't a business but I didn't have ex- extra budget for marketing so I started to learn myself and I went to events I went to training workshops I, I watched people online and I was sucking it all in and I was thinking right I need to do this to help my business survive because it's not going to survive if I'm expecting people to walk through the door because they they weren't anymore they were shopping online so I would say that people that are listening as well, that are perhaps at that stage of needing to learn more, want, needing more knowledge, you have to take the bull by the horns and get out there. You need to start putting yourself in places where you're going to learn things and where you're going to meet people. I remember um, my mum saying to me one evening, and we still talk about this, I had this big event in my shop and um, I invited loads of people there and I was exhausted and I wasn't home to half ten that night and I didn't make any money. And was uh, I was upset because I was tired and I have children at this stage and she said to me I don't know why you're doing this I don't know why you're running to all these events I don't know why you did that in your shop tonight you didn't um, make any money and I said but mummy I need to do these things to get with the circles of people that are moving that are in the industry I need to go to the events to hear what they're saying I need to connect with people you never know who you're going to meet you never know who you're going to speak to or what you're going to hear that day that can change things for you and she said, OK, and just like most mums, she supported me then. But she was worried, I suppose, because it was like most people run ragged trying to do everything and learn everything. But a really good example of why that actually worked for me is I went to a training event and I heard Neve Taylor from Digital 24 speaking. And I was like, oh, my God, she's unreal. She's talking all about digital marketing. That's what I need to be doing in my shop. I need I need a session with her. And if I hadn't went to that training, that those thoughts would never have happened. So I tortured her and if she asks her today she'll say oh how many emails did I get from you at the start so anybody knows that they're trying to get in touch with anyone in the digital world it's very very hard because they're very very busy rightly so because they're brilliant at what they do but I kept going anyway and I got a session with Neve. so an hour and we sat and we brainstormed and talked about what my business looked like and what I needed to be doing and I actually only ever had an hour with her but everything changed after that. I, I realised, God, I, need, I really need to be doing this properly. I need to be giving it my all. And when I talk about it, I'm talking about online marketing, which is now my job, ironically. Um, so, and now Neve and I are actually um, co-founders of the Northern Ireland Social Media Awards together. So now business partners, all because I pushed myself 
to go to events when I was so busy and didn't have time, when I didn't really have the budget to pay people to be in my shop when I was there. But look what that has evolved into. So I would say, go to things. Go by yourself. Because you'll always talk to more people when you're by yourself. You'll push yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, Don't hold back from that because that's when you step outside your own little circle, your own little bubble of business, that's when the great things happen. The Dig Podcast needs your help. Did you know that we have thousands of people download the podcast each week, but still people haven't subscribed or followed on the channel. So I'm asking you, if you listen on Apple or Spotify, if you could hit follow. If you listen on YouTube, then hit that subscribe button. It means that I can reach out to even more guests, bring even more actionable advice that can help you in your business. Fast forward another few years, COVID hit. Um, I'd learned a lot. I started to train people in my shop and that's when Dig for Success was born. People came up for workshops at night and it was all about Snapchat back in those days. How to use Snapchat and how to market yourself on Facebook. It's Facebook and Snapchat mainly. And I was training businesses on how to do that. You should be doing this. Real life, honest advice on the ground of what you should be doing. Mixed in with the digital marketing um, information that I was learning at all these events. So Dig for Success without really knowing grew into a business. And then COVID hit. And everyone um, that has followed my journey will know that story. I was devastated. Had to close my shop. It was a, it was a big, it was a big thing. I had a quarter of a million pounds worth of stock and nowhere to turn because it was occasion wear. So no one wanted it. I couldn't. I had no more money to buy other things. Everything was in the stock, and it was just horrendous. I had three kids. Tess was only three months old, and I had big life changing decisions to make. I cried a lot. Spoke to a lot of professionals, my solicitor, my accountant, Jared, my husband, my dad. And I decided very quickly that I wasn't going back to dig children's work. Um, and I did speak to a business owner recently. He said you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. And I realised that I didn't have them all in one basket. I had been building Dig for Success and in 2019 started the Northern Ireland Social Media Awards with Neve. So I had other things and I had to decide which was working and which wasn't, which was right for me as a person, as a family, what was right for me. And I think that's really, really important when you look at your business. We're all doing this for our families. So if if you're stressed and anxiety and things are not working and you know you have a better way, perhaps that's the, way, the route you take, whether it means you have to swallow your pride and take a knock to your ego. Who cares, really? No one. People move on. I meet the majority of people I meet now don't even know I had a shop. And I thought the shop was me. I thought that was my identity. So I didn't, people don't even know that. And I think that's a big realisation for me that actually people don't care. People move on. Like if you look at, I actually compared it to the scandals and the news, you know, different things that have happened recently. And I'm like, people don't even think of them anymore. It, it's fleeting. And they move on with their own lives. So don't you be consumed by what other people think of that or your change in career or your change in business. It actually doesn't matter to them very much but when you're in that moment you think everybody's analysing and judging and talking and they do for a while but then it's forgotten so you need to make the best out of your life so I decided that I would leave Dig Children's where um, it, it didn't happen easy it was a process a journey as you can imagine with all that stock and um, that's the story for another day but I then changed all my social handles to Dig Mama and I started to share content online about family because it was lockdown and that's all people were doing. On the side, it was also mentoring businesses at night on Zoom who were having to grow in this digital world and not knowing how to do it. Everybody needed to be growing. So actually, Dig for Success was growing really rapidly at night on Zoom on these one-to-one consultations and group trainings um, when we couldn't even meet face-to-face. Um, I launched the podcast in um, 2020, November 2020, and um, with encouragement from Loney from BNL Productions, who's behind the camera at the minute uh, looking at me with, uh, heard, this, heard this story a million times but um, you need other people in business and in the world of work encouraging you and you need a support network and he said to me if you want to start a podcast just start it stop talking about it I said well I don't really know how to start a podcast and he drove up to me when you know the regulations were strict and you're only allowed to be in the road for essential purposes and he drove up with a microphone and a headset and dropped it off in my house outside I took it in and I started to record on Zoom, the Dig podcast. The first one, I didn't even press record until halfway through. Fiasco. Didn't know what I was at, but I learned as I went. I didn't pay anybody to teach me. I I, I spoke to people in the industry and um, got a lot of um, advice from B&L Productions. And I just 
take it. It's about taking the step forward. Just start. And that was advice Loni gave me. Just start. So if you're in business and you want to do something new or you want to go meet somebody or you want to speak to somebody, take that step. Send that email. Reach out. Go to that event. That would be my advice because if you don't start, it'll never happen. If he hadn't uh, actually drove those to me that day and I hadn't hit that Zoom button, the podcast wouldn't even exist. And now we're about to hit 100 episodes, quarter of a million downloads and that's where it all began with dodgy earphones even though he would say they're real good ones and a microphone um, so yeah that was in the podcast and then Dig Mama so basically Dig Mama grew because there was a wee video of my wee boy being really busy and it went viral all over the world and I got a very big family audience from all over the world so my, without really knowing that influencer marketing model was growing on Dig Mama and that's a big part of my business now where businesses come on board with me on Dig Mama and I work with them me and my family to create content that resonates with their audience and their business audience so influencer marketing is huge for businesses and you'll hear that from a lot of the experts on the podcast and I am on both sides because I know how how it works to be an influencer but also what the business needs because I've been there I've, I've had the but the, perhaps the retail business, the you know, and I speak to a lot of businesses as well. So Dig Mama is a big part of my work. But with that comes a thing that a lot of people struggle with. And that's what other people are saying about you and perceptions of you and things that you might read about yourself. So that's a big thing because people, businesses don't want to put themselves out there online because they're afraid of what other people will say about them. Now, that is a dying thought I think people are now realising, do you know what? I need to be online. If you're not online, you're nearly like, what's wrong with you? In business, I mean, like, because you need to be there. You need to be showing up. But people do hold back because of that. And I just want you to know, if you're listening, everybody experiences that. I experience that. I know that there are forums out there and websites where people tear people apart. And I realised recently in the last year, so actually this time last year is, really bad with me and I, I felt like oh my goodness this is not f- what I signed up for I just want to do my job and be a good person and I started to do some soul search and it's actually helped me mentor other people now um, actually you need to find ways to deal with that because people are always going to be there's always going to be people out there with opinions we just can hear it now easier because of social and read it but it's how you deal with it so I started to realise look and think about my brand values again why are you doing this I am doing this because I want to make a difference, both for families, for community, for businesses. I am doing a good job. I am working hard for my family and I actually don't do anything, in my opinion, that's negative or or, or causing harm to anyone. And I have to keep saying that to myself. And that actually drives me on now because, like I said, the people will always talk and they're always going to have an opinion. But are they paying your bills? Are they being showing up for your family? No. So keep thinking about that. Don't let that hold you back because it would. But don't let it because you're going to be held back and everyone else is going to fire on and you're going to be left behind. So I say that to myself weekly. I'd say I say that to myself weekly. said it to myself daily this time last year and now I say it to myself weekly when thoughts creep in of what are they going to say or what are they saying about me. That is unhealthy, negative talk that will not help your business or you. So um, it's not easy now, but you have to find ways to deal with that and I'm working through that and I definitely it's it's a learning process but surround yourself with good people honest people in your industry and friends will help you get through that so don't let that be the reason that you don't take steps forward or put yourself or your business online only good things will come if you're if you've got your brand values at heart I fully believe that when before we come, came on the camera I said to Kasha from Polka Dot Photo who works on the um on the production of all my events, um, what 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 do you think people would want to know, Kasha, in my um, in my podcast interview? And she said, "Well, when I meet people and I say that I'm working with Caroline um, on on such and such event, they're like, oh, she she always seems so down to earth.' And she said, like, "Could you talk about that? How you stay down to earth when you're on social media?" And I was like, "I feel a wee bit cringy talking about that because why wouldn't she be?" So I would say, don't lose yourself if you're going to go on social media for your business or to grow your brand always be true like I would like to think how I am on camera for my Instagram stories and Facebook stories and TikTok or wherever you may see me is how you meet me because that's just the way and why shouldn't it be don't lose yourself because you feel you need to be 
a certain person or a certain way in business. You don't. You started your business because you are you and people were invested in it because of how you are. Don't change and be a person people think you should be, if that makes sense. So if I hope that answers Kasha's questions or the people that ask Kasha those questions. I also um, had a, quest- a few questions in from uh, people on social whenever I put the question box up. And one of them was, what's been your biggest learning? And I was like, oh my God, the biggest learning has definitely been when I closed my shop and realising that it wasn't it wasn't failure. So I felt like everybody was looking and saying, oh, she had to close her shop. And there was like those rumours and people saying things, as there'll always be. I keep reminding myself, people will always talk, but the majority are rooting for you. So I that was the biggest learning, that change is good. Change is, is um, what's the word? Change is needed and change is natural. Nobody, nothing stays the same and if it does it's boring and stagnant you need to change whether it's changing within your business whether it's changing businesses whether it's changing circles change is good so that's been my biggest learning uh, that failure isn't failure it's just learning I know that might sound cliche but you have to look at it like that what did I learn from that I learned that I need to act quick I need good people around me I need to speak to the experts before I make my decisions all of those things so that was a question on social that came up Um. Follow your gut was a big one. But then I spoke to Brenton from Be Perfect and he said also find out what, the, you know, find out all your advice first before you follow your gut. Like your gut can sometimes not always be the right way. But if you have an overriding feeling that you're doing the right thing, then go for it. And as I said, if you fail, you learned and and, and people may judge, but they'll have moved on tomorrow. So don't let that be the reason. You've only got one life and it's for you and your family. So do what you need to do to make you happy. And that's definitely what I'm doing. Um... The future, like I could talk all day, all the different things like mentorship, seeking out a mentor is really, really important. Niall McKenna from Waterman House talked about that. Um, following your gut, um, doing things that anybody would do. Don't think you're above the certain things like Brenton from Be Perfect talked about scrubbing the floors. And, you know, you, you need to be able to know all parts of your business before you can actually excel. So that's a really important thing as well. And yeah, I've, I've, I've got loads of points here, but I, I suppose I'm just talking about the future of the Dig brand. So what I have going on at the minute is the Dig podcast, which I love. It's my passion, talking to other leaders and helping educate people about how to do things and um, never be afraid. And I've learned that in the podcast to say what you don't know. So sometimes when I'm speaking to business owners and they're very high profile and they've got a lot of success and they're talking in abbreviations or they're talking about their industry, I always say, and I, what do you mean by that? And I think that's really key for learning. If you don't know, just ask. Because I'd say there's about 10 other people around you don't know either. And I'm, I'm so glad you asked that. I think that's why the podcast has been so successful because I always ask and I encourage you to do that too. Ask other people how do they do things. And if they don't tell you, they're not part of your tribe because I think you should share the knowledge. And if you know something, show someone else as well. That's really a key thing. So the Dig podcast, I've Dig for Success, which I still mentor businesses, do training, the Dig Social Academy, um, training businesses online is really, really important for me and face to face and because that's how you learn and grow. And I love that. Um, Dig Mama is a community all on its own. We've got the big day out. We've had over the last two years, two like 2000 women have came together and celebrated life and women and positive positivity and community at the big day, big days out. And we've got more of those planned next year. Um, uh, Dig Mama is is and I talk about Dig Mama, not like talking about myself in third person but I see Dig Mama as a brand now of people and a community of people that all come together and make a difference and um, it, f- it feeds into Dig Deep for Kids which is a campaign that I started five six years ago and it was just a, a stand in my shop asking f- for um, money from people to help families at Christmas and it's now grew in where we've been grew that we've been able to help we've been able to buy almost a million pounds worth of essentials for business or for uh, charities that need essentials for families at Christmas. So it's a really different concept, Dig Deep for Kids, because we take the money, 100% of it, and we buy what the charities need and we get double the amount because we work with influencers. It's unbelievable and reiterates the power of social. And when people say things about social media, I always say, whoa, if we weren't doing social media, we would not have helped thousands of families right here in our own country without it without Dig Deep for Kids so the Dig Mama community and the Dig for Success community help 
dig deep for kids at Christmas. They all come together, they rally, they do, um, you know, sponsored events in their businesses. They buy raffle tickets, they buy merchandise that we put up online and they bring products to a big warehouse and we help our people. That's what it all is all about. And if you're doing business, but you're also helping your communities, then that I think that's a good positive thing and will be rewarded in a positive way. So Dig Deep for Kids is really important to me. We're just going through the charity status at the minute to get registered because it's got so big now. You need that registration, that um, clarity online of, 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 of a charity where people can go onto the website and read all about who we support and all of that. So that's really exciting. Um, it will always remain the same. 100% of the profits will go, but we need the charity registration obviously for gift aid and all of that. So all of that is the Dig brand. Um, but behind it all is me and my family. And that's what really what it's all about. Um, but I couldn't do it just for me. I've got a team now um, on all the different projects. Um, and it's 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 more that it's it's more than you as well. Your business is about who you have around you and your also your customers and your people and everybody that watches me in social and everybody that watches the Dig podcast. So if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify or YouTube and you want to leave any comments or if there's any more questions, I can go and answer them on my socials. That's just a brief overview. And um, the future, what does the future look like for Dig? Everybody's talking about artificial intelligence and, and um, how we can use all the apps and programs to help our businesses excel. And I suppose if I was talking about the Dig podcast, we've been playing around with um, programs such as Munch to like edit the podcast, cut it up in chunks and get micro content out. So it can actually be really, really efficient for your business to embrace those type of artificial intelligent programs. Um, for the likes of Dig Mama, no one's ever going to take a stand in robot as a Dig Mama on the stage of the big day out. So Dig Mama will always be me. But absolutely, I can use the tools that are coming to the fore to help me utilize like online blogs and and all the stuff that goes along with the online content. But you can never forget about the people. It, 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 that's what it comes down to, the human interaction. And I know my brand will never lose that. And I would say most people listening will feel they want to keep that as well. So let's use artificial intelligence to help us and to help us grow, but never lose the the human aspect. Oh, I'm like, I hope I've answered some of the questions. I hope I've brought some value. And um, I suppose my leaving... My leaving thoughts to you are thank you for all for supporting the podcast this far. And um, if you support me in any of the other ways on Dig Mama or encouraged in any way by sending messages, they don't go unnoticed. And um, I love doing the podcast, but couldn't do it if you guys weren't liking and subscribing and following on the channels um, and watching all the content. So thank you. Good luck to you and your business too. And I'll be back to you next week with um, another exciting guest. <laughs>